plastic mesh back, and apparently he can just put his claws through it and reach me. It's an interesting choice, <laughs> but... He's just reminding you who's boss right now? I guess so. Oh, all right. We are streaming. Bandit, you're on Twitch. You're on Twitch. Wait, tell me about your cat or cats, plural. What are their names now? Bandit and Vesper. Bandit and Vesper, yeah. yes. I feel like there's been generations of cats, which is why I'm, I'm not... Yeah, sure yeah, yeah. We The, the pandemic sort of... We, we did a sad turnover of cats, but... Yeah, Band, okay. Band, Band and Vesper, they are brother and sister, and we got them like a month before our other cat passed, and that was a big surprise. <laughs> oh, wow. Were they bonded, or were they kittens, or like when you got them? Uh, like, what? They were like a year old. They were like kind of feral rescues that we got. Um, so they they have, they have like each other. They're big fans of each other. Um, okay. They took a while to warm up to humans, though, so they were kind of, kind of slightly special needs cats. I see. But now they're pretty, um, pretty damn chill. Yeah, you probably bribed them with food, right? I've bribed them with a lot of food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's it works very well. They're extremely food motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did not know the term food motivated before my partner started working uh, as a vet assistant, and now I know all about it. It's uh, I've I've never met an animal that wasn't food motivated, so I'm. Some of them aren't. aren't. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm curious about that. <laughs> for for cats, seemingly everyone I've had. You can get them to eat just about anything with a treat. I guess it's maybe easier to say that some of them are really food food motivated, and others are not not as much. That's probably true, yeah. Because they all want to eat pretty much all the time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I just checked the audio on the stream real quick too. Yeah. Okay. How are we how are we sounding? We sound like we are on the stream. Awesome. How how was your weekend? It goes good. I uh, I'm, I hung out with my grandma and played Deathloop. <laughs> Tell me about Deathloop. Not at the same time. Uh, it's good. It is a very dumb, accessible version of Outer Wilds. Oh, okay. That actually sounds good for me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. I mean, it is also a murder simulator. You do a lot more murdering than Outer Wilds, but like it kind of has a very uh -huh. a very similar like. When you play through a loop, you sort of discover what's happening and you can orchestrate a, co a couple pieces to be in different spots at different times to change how you interact with the world i don't know how much like video game criticism you consume uh, uh some but the term murder and the 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 series uncharted got associated uh at some point mm -hmm. especially by like the kind of like woker video games press well, like, i was gonna say isn't, it, isn't it uncharted the one that really had the the kerfuffle about ludo narrative dissonance i think maybe that maybe that's what it is is it is it because like you're this happy-go-lucky dude and then you just like kill a bunch of brown people is that basically it i mean it's uh, you've played uncharted right oh yeah i played them all okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. uh I, my understanding was that like it's like you go you like kill a thousand goons like they're not even all brown goons. They're just goons. Yeah. Um, but then in the cutscenes, you are like hesitant to pull the trigger on like the main bad guy. You like you have this moral right. like you're like I don't know if I can kill. And I'm just like I just gunned down a small army to get here, and you're now you're gonna have like some moral equivocating about this. I don't think so. Yeah. I I uh, to be honest, I have that issue with like all kinds of cinema and and video games where the big bad deserves some kind of like you know pause or consideration or, or mercy really but all like the working class like hired games you just kind of like cut down indiscriminately you know yeah <laughs> well you're you're gonna like death loop uh, okay so I, I don't know if you like it uh it, at least it breaks that trend <laughs> completely um it's like very excited about killing people and like i mean I got a couple of names, but the ending I got was that it's fun to kill people, so I'll just stay in the loop. <laughs> like, oh wow, okay. Like the game, the game is so over the top in how gaminess it is. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, I think the the key thing for me has nothing to do with anything sophisticated. It's just whether or not um, the frame rate and the motion is smooth enough for mm -hmm. me to play it without feeling sick. Basically, I know. I'm easy to please. <laughs> I noticed there's a, a head bob setting too, so you can turn that off. Okay, yeah, which probably helps I don't know a lot. What it is? I think probably the presence of a lot of like narrow corridors. Like, usually uh, playing on consoles way better for me, but I, I had a hard time with Hitman. Mm. 
Like I was like walking around on the, just the first the, the tutorial level, you know, on the ship. Oh yeah. On Hitman, and I think the corridors just kind of like got me, and there's just something about the way that the camera moved or whatever that, mm. that made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm curious how you'll respond to this one. It's I kind of liked it. it. It's a puzzle box, but the puzzle box is quite small, and they they use their art yeah. style pretty well to like sort of indicate where paths are and give you a sense of orientation. So yeah, it might work. It was neat. It, it was a neat experience. Super stylish. Yeah. Honestly, like it was less style. They put all the style in the in the trailers. <laughs> okay. Okay. So basically, that that's that's all 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 it is. Uh, unfortunately, um, yeah. They they blew their wad on that. Oh. There's a lot of ecstatic uh, press around this game, <laughs> right? Like, uh, I mean, there was this one screenshot. Yeah, this here. Oh. Is it this? Switch, switch to the, the... I mean, gosh. It, is anything that? I, I, thought it, I thought it was fun, and I really wanted to finish it. Um, like, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the process from start to finish, and then there was only one part in the middle where I was like, oh, it's a, weird that I had to do that twice. Uh, Okay, well, let me ask you this. What are the best games you've played in the last 12 months? Judgment? It's not as good as Judgment. <laughs> Judgment is good. Judgment. What about Hades? I mean, Hades is better. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It it plays kind of, There's a lot of similarities to Hades, actually. Um, it, has, it has... I feel like they borrowed the snappy dialogue for many situations um, yeah. system, which was a good fucking system. Yeah. Uh, Disco Elysium oh, this character looks was so a better cool. she's game. She's kind of like the big bad, right? Or she's she is she's sort, like the force of nature. She is sort like, of like the big bad, yeah. Okay, you should you should play it with the multiplayer turned on. I feel okay, like. so so basically, it's like Dark Souls or, or Bloodborne, where people can come in your game. And, yeah, and, and she and sometimes it spawns her as an NPC, and she's just too easy. Uh, I see. Okay, it's it's cool. more it's more fun to let the yeah let the actual <laughs> humans do their work. Uh, so who, yeah. who plays who controls her is it people who've already beaten the, the game and then they once once you get past the tutorial you can control her oh yes nice. Yeah. nice so it could be could be anyone uh yeah she's badass i the it's the character so it sounds like really it's a fun. short game then like you you i don't think last time we talked to you i just it i just beat it in a weekend yeah okay wow yeah nice yeah i kind of like i kind of like binged it in a weekend but like it was not very long yeah, you'll like it, or well, you won't. And if, and if you don't, give it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. Um, I added the mortar back into the game. Oh yeah, let's see this sucker. Yeah, it's funny. I I, 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 I like spent like an hour and a half trying to get the math right. Mm. Um, hey, looks but good. then I found all these Unity functions that just do it for me. <laughs> Yeah, so it goes, so it goes, right? Um, that looks like a mortar. It does. It it, it kind of doesn't. It's hard to see like when mm -hmm. it's small, but I think it's just our graphics. Uh, I'm trying not to get too caught up on anything visual in the game right now, but like, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit hard to see. But it arcs mm -hmm. correctly. Nice, you know, and it kind of predicts. It it, it kind of chooses the right arc for where you click. Yeah, wait, I, that's, I'm curious about that. What is the, um, so if you click the center of that cube, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to keep hitting that? Uh, it's not hitting the cube. Oh. What I'm, what you're targeting is the, is the ground mm -hmm. underneath the cursor. Okay. So you're hitting, you're hitting the, that cube. Yeah, exactly. So okay. if we wanted to target the cube, what we would do instead is ray cast from the camera and any damageable that we hit. So we'd probably have a damageables layer or something. Mm-hmm. Any damage, any damage roll that we hit, um, we target that point uh, with the mortar and then fire at that point. Uh, but right now, it's it's targeting the ground. Gotcha. Okay. Which I think we can. Uh, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure which way it should go. Um, you know, it's tough. I think I think it would be before we do the ray casting. I kind of want to put like a I want to paint a reticle on the ground. That is. That is what I was gonna suggest as well. Yeah. That was, that was option two, basically. It's like you know how it's like people will will, will place a decal that projects down on, onto, so it's still essentially a disc. Yep. Um, but it's also projected onto the surface of the, op the the objects that like are over it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I think, that now, would, I think that would at least help like my mental model connect with it and see what if it does or doesn't feel right. Yeah, exactly. And then I, like the thing is, if we add a second layer, that's where it might be interesting to do a little bit of picking. Like, sorry, not second layer, like a second mm -hmm. level or mm -hmm. third level of, of, of verticality. Um, the idea which I'm kind of into, I, it would feel like a, a, sh a shame in this game if we didn't add a little bit of verticality to it, but at the oh, same I time... I think we should, yeah. Okay, yeah. We should have, um, we should have ascent levels of verticality. Yeah. Oh. What does ascent have? Like 50, 50 levels? It's horrible. Oh, you're talking about the arcology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but as you play ascent, there really isn't... The combat levels are only you're only ever dealing with two at once. Like you have, yeah, or maybe three. Waste level, you have waste, level, yeah. And sometimes you have below. So you have, you might have like platform, ground, and lower. That's that's right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there's a little bit of like a like a like a like a gentle grade up. Did you ever finish that game? No, I really would like to go back to it. It seemed fun. Yeah, it, it was fun. Um, it has really uh, like in hindsight, it has really bad game balance mechanics. Mm. And the the economy of the game, they didn't really tune very well. So like, it feels like you're on the same gun all like basically the entire game. That's too um, bad. I hate when that happens. So they botched the whole role playing part of it, but it's just stylish enough and and fun enough to blow stuff up that like it sustains you for however long you and your friends want to play it. It right? is pretty damn stylish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, well, how, the thing is, the mortar right now is the only thing you can shoot. How should we ah, rotate the gun? Yep. Yep, we got some we got some options there. Yeah. Let's see what what buttons do we have available. We've got. Uh, what are we using Q to change your builder? Mm -hmm. Mouse wheel zooms you in. What about yeah. what about like one two three? Uh yeah, we can do that. I just noticed. I well, I saw that Diablo two just came out again, and they added console controls, and I'm really curious how they map that to the. What was a fairly button heavy like keyboard heavy interface? I mean, did you play Diablo three? I did, and I thought they did a good job. Um, they did do a good job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually, I, I played it. I played it when it came out. Then I played it again on console, and I really liked it. Are we invincible? Is, it, is this the is that the deal right now, or do we just like have like very many hit points? I don't know, because you re you seem to be able to destroy walls. Um, yeah, did, so we didn't turn damage off entirely in the game. Can you right? destroy those turrets? Uh, I think so. Oh, the mortar doesn't do splash damage right now, so it's it's not nearly <laughs> as satisfying as it used to be. Okay. Is our tank friend shooting at our friend turret? I'm I am confused at what's happening here. Yeah, what well, what did happen to the friend turret? <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> did you? I don't want to fight you. Did, you. did you turn off all damage for things that aren't the mortar? Because that seems uh, to be what's happening. It seems that like the tanks aren't taking damage. But the tank should be shooting at the other turret, and that turret's not taking damage from the enemy tank either. It's true. I think bullets aren't doing damage, but mortars are. Oh, that's interesting. OK. That must be what it is. Um, so the what I, what I did, if we take a look at the mortar, is. projectile damager there's a projectile damager script script okay does the bullet have a projectile damager yeah that's the question so what it does is like on trigger nice. enter it has to be on the server mm -hmm. this is just a piece of the bullet that does the damage and i added this piece if you if it hits terrain you should probably blow up blow, blow it up because the mortar will hit the ground right um Otherwise, if it's not a network identity that it hits, it just skips over it. Hmm. Um, I'm not so sure about this one. Actually. Is that necessary? Yeah. Because really, like, if it's a... I think what we want is if other network identity not null and... That's basically what I think what we did there. Okay. And and this is like like if you want to be able to if we want to be able to hit ourselves with our own rockets, 
Um, we should add this. This was in here so that the bullet didn't hit you on the way out, basically. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's maybe do weapon changing. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or, or let's actually fix the bullet first. That was kind of where we were. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Does does the bullet have that script and is damageable just sort of done with that now? You know what I bet it is? It is the projectile damager exists, but it doesn't have a non-zero damage value. Hmm. That's the bullet explosion. Prefab standard shell. I renamed it. Ah, There's okay. two bullets. Uh, yep, I was ah, right. There you it go. does zero damage. Okay, so maybe what we can do is oh, wait, set he... a sane in, to a sane default here. Oh, what yeah, that seems good. Okay. Um, by the way, what was the... Um, there was a standard shell script as well. Is that what the bullet mover was previously? That was what the mover was. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm I'm definitely curious as we go to like what I'm still thinking about this in terms of scriptable objects too. Like what things we can keep as data versus behavior. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, I I feel like the well, the thing that moves the mortar really. Mm hmm is actually just like rigid body stuff that's that, that was kind of my cur curiosity is like can we just give it a like if the if it had an angle and a force could we shoot it out of a gun yeah you can um cool what it currently does i'm actually applying uh synthetic gravity mm -hmm. so it has like a force applied to it every frame because this add force function is, is an instantaneous force Okay. As opposed to a continuous one. I think there's a continuous force system in, in Unity Physics. I didn't hmm. bother diving into it too deeply. Um, but other than that, this is actually what's what's motivating it, really, is there's initial velocity when we um, spawn it. And all this is just to calculate where to spawn it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And everything everything here is to basically, yeah, you pick up, you take a point, and then it picks the angle. Assuming a constant gravity force and assuming a constant muzzle velocity, regardless of how far something is, which is the way it worked in uh, the WebGL version of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I kind of copied and pasted the code a bit. Um, yeah, and then uh, it needs a little bit of code to make sure that the, the mortar is oriented along the path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this used to be a bunch of code uh, in the WebGL version. Um, Look at is just my favorite fucking function. It's pretty good. Yeah, this used to be a ton of code. Then I was like, you know what? What I'm going to do is just take its position, take its normalized velocity. That's basically, if you were going straight, that's the next point that it would be going to, and have it look at that. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. And it works. It really works. Probably wouldn't work if you're trying to get. Like if you're going like straight down, but mm, would it have the like pi or negative pi flip basically? Uh, yeah, I, I I honestly don't really know. I just feel like it's the opposite direction of the up vector, and it, it seems like bad things will happen mathematically. Fair, but it works right now. So I'm I mean, not complaining. that's awesome. Yeah, I did do it using sines and cosines. Like I had the math kind of broken out um, the way it was in the WebGL version. And one thing I ran into while I was implementing it is I realized that all the rotations uh, in Unity are left-hand rotations. So if you're talking about like a rotation around the y-axis, mm -hmm. it's a left-handed rotation around the y-axis. Wait, is that um, backwards from our last system? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Unity just has to be special. I bet, I bet Unreal Engine does it the other way too. <laughs> Uh, I, I I actually don't know. Uh, um, that's a good question. Okay, I'm looking uh, at Unreal here. left or right handed? I bet it's I bet it's left handed. Okay. Fair enough. I know direct direct X or direct three D is left handed. Hmm. Okay. Um. So just the web that's different. Yeah, Unreal left uses left-handed Z, Z up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's even weirder. Left-handed Z up is is what Blender does. Yeah. Uh, 3ds Max is right-handed Z up. Actually, this is what Blender might do: is right-handed Z up. Mm. And then Unity is left-handed Y up. 
And OpenGL is right-handed Y up, I think. I, I love that everyone has just <laughs> picked a totally different version. <sighs> the claim is that it doesn't matter, but it clearly does because I spent two hours trying to figure it out because the math was a certain <laughs> way. <laughs> Luckily, there's these utility functions that basically allow me to not even think about it, which is good. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty magical. Cool. Uh, yeah, let's let's switch some weapons then. OK. Uh, let's make sure that that bullet's fixed at this point. Um, it's always difficult for me to know in a prefab. Mm -hmm. When you've actually saved it. Oh, yeah. it's 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 one now. Yeah. Um, you changed you changed it. I think I think by exiting the prefab mode, I think it's like committing it. But I don't think I typed one, right? I, oh, I you think did. I changed yeah. it in the code. No, I saw you type one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, because it's hard for me to know. Like, if I do set a default like this in the script, is it going to go back retroactively update? Uh, the prefab, and I think the answer is probably no. Right? I would expect it not to. I, I assume okay. every time we attach it, we get the default values as like our editor variables. Yeah. Okay, so now things should be blown up. Yes. Well, I think our buddy's going to die first, right? Mm. What? Still not really taking damage. Uh uh. All right. Well, let's make sure that it's doing what we think we're doing. Cool. So let's say uh, turrets, right? Mm -hmm. When it shoots, it creates a standard shell. Okay. All right. That all looks good. And it's using prefab standard shell. Mm -hmm. And what that is in the object prefab list yeah yeah it's so the pr i updated it in the prefab object prefab list <laughs> say that five times fast <laughs> standard shell is the standard shell cool oh yeah and like it it is instantiated yet so it is and then finally let's make sure that the object list itself is the right one okay mm -hmm. uh it is so it is a standard shell Yeah, that looks good. What is what's going on in the damageable? Any do we change anything there? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, it's Oh yeah, that remains pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Is there possibly any system that's is there anything that's not being sent correctly over the wire? So the damager, all the damage should be getting resolved on the server because mm -hmm. we're basically handling the collision uh, as a server construct. Mm -hmm. uh, so and the damage, yeah, damageable health should be happening on the server, and the health yeah. is a sync var, so it gets sent back to the clients. I mean, we can, yeah, we can debug. We can, but that looks pretty convincing. It does say damage zero, which is interesting. Hmm. That is a surprise since it's on the since you changed the bullet. Oh. It says it there too. Huh. Are we it's not changed when we instantiate it, is it? Let's try this. Okay, it's being really powerful. Whole game, whole game's gonna explode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, that worked. That lo that worked. Um, so now let's just change it back to one, right? Hmm. Now, as you were saying, eventually this is probably going to become. Maybe there is a standard bullet component that handles damage and it handles trajectory as well. Um, it's unclear to me whether, like, how much we want, like, separate prefabs for different things versus, I think, as you were saying, like, just like a, a different data sheet that's being applied to a particular projectile. Yeah, I, I think as we, as we sort of, like, expand upon the weapons, I'm hoping it just sort of becomes clearer. Okay. I think what happened was some state just wasn't getting set set correctly. Weird. Weird or weird. Okay. Cool. And does the enemy tank not shoot anymore? Or am I making that up? Great question. Hmm. Okay. Uh let's uh let's try let's try let's try that. Oh did I did I quit uni? What happened? <laughs> Might have done command Q when I meant to do some, uh, command tab or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, I don't I don't use Chrome, but the one feature I love is the like, are you sure you wanted to quit Chrome? Because they they know that you <laughs> yeah. never wanted to quit Chrome. You just meant to hit command W. It's true. Although I turned that off. <laughs> you turned it off. Oh, I, I I wish I could turn that on for a lot of apps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should probably should have it on for my own hmm. for my own sanity. I can't add it to the things I, I wanted even more in like Unity, so Alright, stop shooting my boy here. <laughs> I think I think if you wanna if you wanna keep it alive, you need to blow up the blue turret first. Okay. Cause then it'll start chasing you. This is so tricky, uh -huh. but I can do it really quickly now because I have mortar. It's hitting itself. It's hitting itself. And it's gonna blow up in a second. It's not damaging itself. It is hitting itself. Huh. Interesting. If you um if you open up the inspector on the yeah, on the hierarchy and just find the enemy tank, like I assume its damage is not going down. Yeah, it is hitting itself. Hmm. Um, can, you, can you look at the damage ball on that on the enemy tank real quick? Okay, yeah. Okay, so it took some hits, but no longer. And if you shoot it, that should go down one. But yep. yep. Okay. Interesting. Um, it is blowing up on itself. Oh, you know what it is. Hmm. We are not. Adding 0.5. Oh, it's it's spawning on. It's in the ground. Here. Uh, wait. The spawn point is there though. Yeah, there. The spawn point is there. Um. Hmm. Wait, let's take a look at the spawn point. Yeah. Good point. This is probably yeah, you're pause the game. Yeah. yeah. That looks like the right spot. Uh huh. Sure does. I see it. Hmm. And that probably isn't any different than the player, right? Should be nearly identical. Yeah. And this spawn point is definitely the it's from the scene, yeah. From this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
What's it, the best way to view the diff here? Is it possible that the self-check for net ID is just not working in the projectile damager? Like that the, might be right. The bullet, the bullet uh, is destroying we just changed, itself. We, yeah. we did just change it, right? True, 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 true. If it's not null and the net ID is equal to the creator net ID. And, oh, oh you know what? I think I know what's going on here. Okay, I was gonna say, we can put a debug in here too and see what we're actually running through. Well, no, we're setting the net ID. I was gonna say, maybe the creator, the create function's not doing it correctly. Mm. Let's, uh, I mean... Let's see if the player the player does the same thing. Okay. Wait. Oops. Oh, wait, the player's shooting mortars, so who even knows? Yeah. Nice. Oh, you're in prefab mode. What did I change? I didn't change anything, did I? I think you set the spawn. You just set it again. I assume it just thinks it's dirty. Okay, so you can pop off. Huh. No, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, can we put a, B a debug in the player in the projectile projectile damager where it does the net ID check? Yeah, uh, one second. Oh sure. Oh god. Also, yeah, you need to turn off bullets <laughs> or turrets. Yeah. And you want to do it basically anywhere, right? I mean, let's just break at the top of the function. If we're hitting the ground, it'll be nice to see too. Though I don't think we are. hitting the ground what huh is the oh, can we uh wait while we're here can we switch to unity and see the bullet should still be alive so we can look at its collider in the game view maybe <laughs> uh why can't i open unity is it oh because i'm on a break point so Really? It won't let you interact with it at all? It's like the whole editor is, uh, is frozen. Oh, no. OK. Well, whatever. Fine. That's terrible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but I got an idea. OK. Uh, what I do want to see is this. Wait. What just the happened? fuck just happened? OK. The target position is 0. Is uh, what is the bullet spawn point in the player prefab? Is it is it actually the because the y value is really low? Is it actually because the coordinates are zero 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 for the that'd be really zero point one is way too low. I'm gonna say yeah. Huh. So it, I don't buy that the trans form for that is negative 13 negative 18 too or is that where it is on the map is that the like yeah i think that's it's map position correct that looks like the tank's position not the spawn point hmm. yeah but the spawn point is a child of it so it should i don't think it's i don't think this is an offset this is absolute i want to say gotcha i think yeah, it just yeah, it just seems wrong. Especially when we just looked at it. Huh. Mm. Okay. Can we pop into the player object real quick and look at its spawn point? 
just yeah. Let's take a quick look at the enemy tank here. Okay. So I'm worried that it's being interpreted as zero, zero, zero for some reason, which seems wrong. I mean, it's, it's at the right spot here. Yeah. And its position is that is that like offset from the I'm not exactly sure how its yeah. position is being used. As I was say, dive into the player and see how that spawn point looks. It's it's like the object right below enemy tank. Looks quite different. It's like way above. What? You see that? Yeah, that's bizarre. Isn't it? What's it look like in the prefab? Good question. All right, I gotta stop before I look at the prefab. <laughs> it literally is out there. What? I am pretty sure that's not how I left it. <laughs> okay, well, what if I zero it out? Okay. I mean, that would be bad, right? Yeah, and it's weird that these zeros go to the base of the tank. Yeah, the spawn should be relative to the barrel here, right? I sure think so. You know what I'm noticing? This one doesn't have the mesh renderer on it. I wonder if that's applying some... I think we can delete the mesh renderer from the enemy spawn. I think we should also move this spawn back to a place that we think it should go. This one? Yeah, like just drag it up and out cause it, and just let it be an empty game object. Oh boy. What does the lock mean? Locks the perspective of me. It's not what I thought it did at all. And then how do I see it from above? That's what I wanted. Like yay? Yeah, let's see what that looks like. All right, then you're saying the enemy tank also had some issues, right? Yeah, so on that spawn, what happens if you delete the mesh filter in the mesh renderer? Because we don't need it um, for the spawn specifically. And, and the mesh filter. There we go. So, so this is what we're seeing. I think, I think yeah, and I think the, the dealio is that we were looking at a sub mesh that is rendered at zero, but is actually, I guess like, I don't know. It had, it had objects in it that were offset by that amount. That's weird. I don't like that it took our handles with it. I'm still a little bit confused as to what was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and me both. I think I think the mesh renderer, like the way we set up the object in Blender, was being reflected when the mesh renderer was there on that game object. But it is in fact not how we are rendering this thing. I 
I wish there was a way I can get like directly above this. I know I missed the blender controls. I want I want that numpad snapping. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think that's gonna be okay. You're still gonna hit the collision though, right? Like if we go in here, you're gonna well We were we were know. hitting the ground. We were hitting the ground. Okay, we were hitting the ground. Yeah. yeah. Cause you should be okay with the player object. That's doing it. Okay, there we go. I guess my resolved. I mean I have a question which is like what did you you didn't change anything though? <laughs> like I don't think you went in and changed the enemy tank model, so why why? Yeah. Was the maybe with the ground wasn't blowing up bullets before. That's what that's what it must be. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we are always shooting from the ground, is what we're learning. Right? For for the enemy tank. But not for the turrets, not for you. Why not for the player tank? Oh, because somehow the spawn point was like way above for whatever random reason. Yeah. Yeah. The spawn point was div did not have a mesh render on it, so we were looking at the true position in the system. So you're saying that somehow by attaching a mesh render it represents the position of the game object differently? That's what I understand. Like that that game object was at zero zero zero, and the but the vert for the vertices of that point were exactly. And like I guess oh, for mesh works. rendering that works right. Yeah, that's confusing. When I guess we're rotating, we're rotating the barrel and the spawn point together but if they're both rotating around the y-axis at zero it just keeps working yeah, so I maybe so. maybe random chance that that was okay yeah okay great we'll take it <laughs> have you thought about like what this game would be like to play on a controller have you plugged a controller in it it's sort of playable uh well obviously the mouse clicks don't work but you what you can move it around uh yeah yeah, the 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 way we're doing input uh, works with D pads. Okay, which is great. And then is there a cursor? No, we need to we need to map the other or we need to map the other uh, joystick to rotation probably. Yeah, but we could. So the way that other games do twin stick is they do twin stick, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you just like basically move. Uh, there's like a, this imaginary cursor, there's an imaginary ring around where you're pointing, right? And your controller essentially contr like moves which point on the ring that your turret is pointing at. Mm -hmm. uh, that would make uh, building really difficult, right? Yep. Yeah, I've never, and... I've never seen a building mechanic quite like this on a twin stick. You don't really do RTS on a on a on a, on a modern controller, do you? Um, no, th there are there are some. Let's do cross code switch. Uh, maybe there's some kind of screen capture. Mm -hmm. They do a little bit of this. They got to show some of the. Um, Oh, well, here. That was almost it. Oh. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. There's that. There, there's the pointer you control. I guess they kind of do what the ascent does, um, where there's a ray between where the cursor is. Hmm. Yeah. So their cursor is like basically pointing this direction, and what this 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 path predictor here is just because like this game has a lot of like bounce your shot off of angled things. Yep. Kind of nonsense. Um. Hmm. I'm looking for I'm looking for strategy games that are on console. It's not many. It's a under underrepresented genre. Hmm. Oh, how did uh how did Shadow Attack work with a controller? I guess it's just pointer. You're just pointing. Oh no, Jeff, I've lost you. Uh-oh, technical difficulties.
welcome to the just me show let's see where let's see where he is and hope he comes back soon let me just uh pop this up for a second well i see what is going on God, if this is like California's power run out, that'd be really funny. All right, sounds like Jeff's writer gave up the ghost, and we are going to sort this out in a second. Hello. Sorry about that. All right, we return. That's okay. I got to put up that teaser screen and tell people we'll be right back, which I haven't used in a while. <laughs> which is that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, there's something weird about my 5G uh, router. Are you on? Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were on like cellular internet from T-Mobile. That makes more sense. So I do have 5G on my phone. Right, because we got these new phones. Yep. Um, so it's very confusing. There's 5G Wi-Fi and 5G cellular. And as far as I know, they're different things. They're two, two, right? two totally different things, yeah. Oh my god, why did they do this? Well, it's, uh, the fi 5G on the router is just 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And this is... And the 5G here means the fifth generation. Fifth generation, yeah. Um... Although, curiously, I think my router has started to freak out around the same time that I got the new phone. Not saying... Bill Gates only wants you to have one kind of 5G, yeah. so, so you <laughs> yeah. better pick. I think it's jealous. I, I, it might be jealous. It very, it very well might be. It could be time for me to get a new router, though. Uh, I, love, had... I love my Eros. They're really great. Is this the router to get? Uh, yeah, and get like you get like two of them. You get a two pack. Oh, they're just and... little little mesh nodes. Oh, it's it's six G now. Is that what this means? Oh yeah, we're we're no longer on Wi Fi five. We're on Wi Fi six. <laughs> I don't know what that means actually. So what is it? Gosh. So uh, what do I want? Do I want the six? You want the, the six? six. Pro? You don't need the pro. No one needs. What's it. the pro? I think it like double doubles up your Wi Fi speed. That's for larger homes. Eh. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I need one of these cute little guys. Yeah. 
It doesn't look like a spaceship, though. It kind of it kind of worries me. <laughs> Does or doesn't? <laughs> and so, I need. I like because like, so I get away with one. You could probably get away with one, but like the nice thing is you can get one and put it by the router, and get one and put it by your, like put it in your bedroom or put it in the next room. It'll also give you a wired connection for like your PlayStation, which is nice. Oh, that is um, very cool. Yeah, because I find the Wi-Fi on that to be kind of crappy, but it like doubled my speed when I. I did that it. with my PS3. I had a Apple Airport Express for my PS3. Oh uh, yeah, just just like that then. Except you can have multiple of these, and they talk to each other. But they talk to each other over not Wi-Fi. They have their own their own connections. So is the three pack way to go? Is that what you're recommending? Um. Well, so I noticed that they're selling you one with Ethernet ports and two without there. Yeah. The, so one router, two add-ons. Or are you talking about this one here? You could just buy two. <laughs> you don't need to buy three from them. It's cheaper. You're right. Yeah. But I like this. I have I have three in my house. It's really excellent. Um. 50% off Euro Secure with promo code FALL50. What does that mean? What is Euro oh, Secure? They offer like a, they run their own VPN too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And sadly, Amazon owns them, but they bought them after. They were a good company, then Amazon bought them. Okay. It is a, it is a sad thing. There's probably other mesh routers out there that are good. Is it, what about the Google one? I, I've heard, I've had friends use these that really like these as well. I just like, ugh. Which which devil must I choose? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who I prefer is, here. Is there a non megacorp mesh router? I have a soft spot for Google amongst the the megacorps. Okay. Uh, just because their technology is really good. It's really good. But at good. the same time, they might abandon this, right? I, I, <laughs> I worry. If I wanted to buy two of these things, um, do I want Nest Wi-Fi or Google Wi-Fi? <laughs> what? Why? Why are they selling two? You want you want Google Messenger so you can talk to people in Google Chat, oh, and then and then be in Hangouts. Okay. What if I buy this? <laughs> what if I click buy? A one pack is ninety nine dollars. It's cheaper than Euro. Mm -hmm. And I can get a professional to install it for pros. another hundred bucks. <laughs> by pros, come talk to me, pros. Oh, and I can get, I can get three. Oh, that's quite cheap for the price of two. You like most certainly don't need three. <laughs> no, I, and I only have my apartment is seven hundred square foot wet. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Anyways, um, I got off my five G network. I'm back on the internet. Excellent. And we were talking about uh, controllers, right? Oh yeah, I, w I was asking. Uh, I was actually going to ask you how the shadow tactics played on a controller, but I think it was point and click, not. Not twin stick, and you didn't play I it. On played a it I played it on my PC. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people have successfully done this, which is daunting, right? Daunting, but also, I do like making. I do like having that be the one, the one bit of new. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the reason why I care about this is that, like, if our game, if we can't imagine our game being played on the Switch, why are we making it? Absolutely. Right. I feel like I've seen. Like, I really. I enjoyed, I mean, I played a ton of City Skylines on PS4 and like having pointer based interactions was not bad on a controller. I feel like, I feel like finding the marriage of that and moving your player character around is going to be the sweet spot. It's just going yeah. to be hard. Um, I wish I could test it with this thing, but uh, it turns out that this doesn't really follow any protocols that are standard to most operating system drivers. Do you, um, do you have your PS5 controller handy? I do. You can just USB-C it right in your computer and it just starts working. So I think we should do I think we should um, definitely experiment with that. But okay. I, I think the reason why I'm asking about this is that like I'm trying to trying to like rethink the build controls and everything like that. Yep. And probably in the backs of our heads, we should think about a standard modern controller with like a D-pad, four face buttons, mm -hmm. and bumpers and triggers. Yep. Um the notion I have in my mind for cursor control is that the right stick moves the cursor. Yep, I agree. But if you pull the left trigger, it slows the cursor down. Oh. Now that's interesting. And is right is it right almost trigger... as if, almost as if it's like zooming in, right? Like you know when you pull left trigger on most games, it like it's like when you zoom your gun in. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Okay. Um, or. 
or it just auto aims to it auto snaps to the the thing that is closest to the center of the, the center of the reticle. That's another way we can do it. Because like we're not really trying to test people's accuracy in this game, right? This game is not one of accuracy. Well, that that's what I'm wondering is yeah, how much how much magic can we put in there to uh, make it feel good? Like if you hold down left trigger and you move the right stick around, maybe it maybe it jumps to different uh, jumps to different. Uh, like selectables or targetables or, or tiles if you're trying to build or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I was also trying to think of like, like the cursor is both where you're shooting and also where you're where you want to build at the same time. I don't think we can get around that in either mouse control or controller control. Um, I feel like I feel like I have seen mortars in games before. On controller, okay. and I'm, I'm trying. I'm just trying to even remember where. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of like grenade controls, right? You're like you've you switched over to the grenade, mm -hmm. and, but what I'm trying to think of is like for even even for the mouse. How should the cursor behave? And and this is the reason why I'm asking is like I, like I'm I kind of I kind of wonder if there is a different way to build in this mm -hmm. game. I gotta kill this guy. Sorry. <laughs> Right now, you can always build and you can always shoot, right? Yep. Um, what if you held down a button to build? To build. Yeah, if I if I was to think about like the the builder genre on console, it's like left bumper would give you a radial menu. You pick your thing and then you drop it down real quick. Oh, interesting. So you'd basically um, you it would build wherever the cursor was at that time. Yep. Uh, well, I, I was gonna say maybe you use the you use the left mouse button, or sorry, you use the left bumper to open the menu, grab what you want to build, and then you then you're in cursor mode where you're clicking where you want it to go, and you press. Can X. You still shoot at the same time. Depends if build and shoot are different things. We could have it be right trigger and X if we wanted to like have both actions possible at the same time. Sure. What would the like trick? Tri what would the reticle look like? I guess it would turn into the little building you're about to, like a little ghost of the thing you're about to put down. Would you be able to cancel out of that mode? Yeah, I think between you could X and circle, circle, circle should cancel X is build, and you could still keep firing with right trigger. Is that weird? Might be weird. Be worth a try. But you're right. Think we think about the controller really changes it. <laughs> it's really hard, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and I feel like we'd want the right trigger to be shoot, right? Yeah. Tank. I and think... you, you want your, th you want your other thumb on the, the, the stick, right? Mm hmm So it almost feels like it right bumper is built maybe. Could be though. Like you, I, there's a lot of dual stick games where I still take my right finger off to do actions over here. Oh, you know, off of your thumb. Yeah, because you have to use you have to use those face the four face buttons somehow. Like right. it, it is always your right stick thumb, and you do use it a lot, even even in FPSs and shit. I can't I can't comprehend how my hand does those things, but it does do those things. Where's the controller? All right, I, I I think I'm going about this backwards because I'm just trying to figure out um, how we should be swapping guns, mm -hmm. and maybe 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 this is just. I'm thinking too hard, and we should just uh, use a button to toggle between the, the firing modes for now. OK. Yeah. So what if E was t to toggle the toggle through guns? Since okay. we have a toggle through build stuff, we'll just use E to toggle through guns. I think that seems right. OK. Hmm. So I can't, can't plug in a switch controller. That's too bad. Got my pro right here. Let's charge this. Um, haha. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, is it weapon or can you generify that? 
I don't want to do count here. This is this should be uh, the old mode count. Mm -hmm. Should be weapon mode. It should be weapon mode. Yeah. Attack mode. Hmm. I mean, theoretically, these can all just go in. And this really just needs to exist, but probably we'll factor these out to a different class somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, check, shoot, check, build. We're just doing it in, uh, in here. We need to send the build the weapon mode, right? It's not synchronized. Oh, yeah. Great point. We just send it with the builder, right? For Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Probably should be the very first thing, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. Oh, yeah. You're okay. Request builder right there too. Mhm. Mm Is there a thing where I can move this over by one? Is there a hot magic hotkey? Ooh, I don't have one for that. Okay. I wanted to do alt up and down. I'd like to have one for that. That'd be nice. That'd be nice, right? Uh-huh. Felt almost like I should have done that, right? Um, okay, so now we can do this kind of cool thing, right? Yep. This is not, this is necessary <laughs> because we can't have nice things. <laughs> Yeah, love it. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'm gonna take away this comment. We'll figure that out later. Sure. It's basically, where, where do we shoot? Whatever we actually auto target. Um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> um, let's just make sure that works, and then we can add some UI for it. Nice. I have to exit play mode. It won't compile. Yeah, I was just like waiting for something to happen there. It's just bated breath. Mm -hmm. I was like, come on, baby, come on. I like fully poured my cup of coffee all over my desk this morning. And, oh, one, no. and one of my Thunderbolt cables stopped working. And I'm really confused because that's like the last thing I expected to stop working as a cable. But there might have been a little circuit in this thing that I just that I fried. Okay, so the weapon switching works. Nice. Which is good. Um, one of the, my most traumatic moments uh, in my early 20s was when I spilled tea all over my laptop. Oh. And I thought I lost... I was like trying to galaxy brain the recovery process, and I think I accidentally deleted the partition that had all my photos on it. Oh, no. I didn't format over it, so I, I was able to eventually use a recovery tool to dig out the JPEGs and stuff. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> That's terrifying. Right? I think when you delete a partition, it just deletes like the very top level table, mm -hmm. but like the the alt like the file system and all the like whatever. I was able to recover it, but yeah. like I think at the time it was also just kind of a shitty time for my life in my life, and I think that's that was the that was the act that set everything off. Oh it was, no, it was a kind of a dark moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. And now we have Dropbox, so it's great. Everything is in the cloud. I was gonna say I love the I I trust all my photos to be there forever now so 
it's up to yeah. uh, Apple to let me down, I guess. Yeah. Is it possible to do like a system dot unreachable not implemented? That'll do. Yeah. Not implement is not the right semantic though. Not implement means I'm gonna come back to it, right? Or you're calling a virtual method that you need to override or something like that. Not supported? This is more like you're not. Let's see. C sharp convention for unreachable code. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like that the answer is don't have any. Oh god, don't don't tell people to use the go error handle. It's just fucking <laughs> people do that. It's like, yeah, let's invent this cottage like boutique way of handling errors for our program because we want it, we secretly want it to go. Um, here's what it's gonna be. You know what we should have is we should have like a enum not reachable error. I'll just make one right now. Ooh, yeah, that makes sense. Wait, uh, add it from Unity? Good call. I've had a bad time going the other way. Yep. I was tempted over the weekend to, to move all of our prefabs and things into a, basically folders where we commingle the different file types. Yeah, we talked about that a lot on Thursday. I'm not sure how I uh, like it, but right now I feel like I feel myself hunting around a lot. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, util, let's call this. Enum utils. <laughs> I find I have to reopen it in Visual Studio Code or else it thinks that the indentation is four spaces. Oh, fine. And this is not going to be, it's just a namespace really, right? Mm -hmm. And what this will have is like a public class invalid enum value. And then I think what we do is Do we want it to take the value? What is that going to be for default, though? Say again. Well, like we're putting this mostly in the default case. So what does that turn into? We don't really have a value to. Generally, if it's in a well, theoretically, well, we weapon like mode, I guess. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something like this. And this can be kind of the convention, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. Is that... <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh... This is just Visual Studio OmniSharp being confused right now, right? Because I changed types. I think so. I close. I was going to say, oop. I just restarted. The... Well, that's handy. Shit. <laughs> I mean, it's not handy because it takes forever, right? But. One of these things will tell you what's going on. OmniSharp log, maybe. Maybe. 
requires a type argument. I don't want to type that much. Can you not infer? Like, it really should be able to. Um... I could just do object, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm fine with that. This is pretty dirty, but... Yeah, we'll just print it to a string. Seems good. And I think it's still upset with me. Unreachable code detected. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, this worked. Great. Uh, the fact that it... There's so many weird contradictions. The fact that, like... I need this default in this first place. Yep. Right, like you've exhausted all the options and it doesn't care. Because it thinks this is an integer, but then if I, when I try to pass it in where it, where it is an integer, it like refuses to do it. That's really weird, yeah. Um, this is this is good enough. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. This is basically going to be our convention then from mm -hmm. here on out. OK. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk about just like, actually printing this just so we know what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Time to go back to that sweet UI layer. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an object, right, in the actual scene. Is that right? Um, I think you made it a prefab, too. So maybe we can edit that, because that has the should have an easier camera. Good has a, call. Prefab HUD. Yeah, it has its own camera, too. Yep. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> uh, how workable is this going to be? Just, just hit F. Huh. Well, I expected that to actually do something. If you click, uh, if you click okay. on the camera, um, what do you see? Can you focus on the camera? There. Well, well, we can do it like this. Yeah, I guess so. In a game, maybe. Oh come on! It's not a, it's not a scene. So, Ugh. how did we do this before? This was definitely visible at one point, was it not? It was, and I think it still is. Hit hit F now. You're focused on the camera. What the fuck? Why can't it focus? <laughs> It's having a real bad time. Yeah. Mm. Are we like not drawing a UI layer? Do we have a layer off? Uh, we have might a, be it. We have the whole UI layers off. Yeah. 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 Where did you see that? Uh, I assume it's in the layers menu in the top right. I think it's so that it doesn't write over the scene. Hey. <sighs> Woo. I hate how much Unity sometimes still makes sense to me. It's garbage. Just garbage. Okay, so maybe I'll take this build panel mm -hmm. and I'll copy it and I'll paste it. It's a weapon panel now. Huzzah. Sweet. I'm gonna get rid of all this. Gone. The text. The weapon panel will move down. Mm hmm. And the weapon panel will just be text, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be nothing by default. Mm -hmm. Maybe we center align it. Sure. Is that gross? No, nah, I like it. Maybe, maybe put a placeholder in there, because otherwise we won't even be able to see that it's in the UI. Sure. Uh, actually, this is uh, a lot of. We wanted to be able to say mortar. We also wanted to be able to say standard. So maybe the font needs to go down a couple. Yeah, I think notches. so. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, Just spell it like a web 2.0 company. Drop all the drop all the vowels. Yeah. That too. Okay. Um, and then uh, the prefab HUD. Mm -hmm. This script is going to have some pointer to that text field, right? Yeah. Well, we have... What scripts do we have for the UI? Uh, there's a folder of them. Scripts, metals, cores, inventory display. Do we need to create a different one? Um. What, does the build panel have its own script? I think it does. 
on the game object. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. So you're just saying let's create another script on this. I think we're, I think we're just gonna make a script. Yeah. Okay. Um. And that got plopped at like the top of the assets folder. Is that absolutely happened? exactly where it goes? I, I I know better than this. I should have created it in the scripts and then dragged it over. Oh, we have a UI subfolder. We do we? have a UI subfolder. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll look at there eventually. Just burrowing our way in. <laughs> Man, they had to like implement like click and drag and all this stuff. This is not native, right? It's all. Ah, uh, yeah, it's all widget. strange. I don't know if it's QT or what. <laughs> Weapon panel, my favorite. Boom. Um, and it's gonna have a game object, right? Mm-hmm. Text. Mm-hmm. And what does the build panel look like? Oh, this is a very verbose. Um, I guess we're showing the, a mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just grabbing the player. Yep. Hey. I can just grab all this. We don't need these two things. No, but I guess we do need to be using mirror for this. Yeah. And then uh, weapon mode. Mm -hmm. What is the text actually? Can we call it what it I is? I think it's a. I think you can call it a text. Yeah. Is it just text? Yeah, if you open up the inventory display, you should be able to see, but I think it's just text. Yep. Ah, uh, you gotta be using the UI though. <laughs> text dot text? Mm hmm If it's not going to complain to me about the, like, if I comment this out, I don't even actually think we have a Rosalind rule that. Oh. I, I thought... mean, if we did the, if we did this. I'm not sure what you prefer here, but if we did this, then it would complain. I think it's like. That's too bad. I. I do like this format. And that thinks it's not ah, fine. I mean, let's let's add another one. And so this would be our like throw new. Hmm. Nice. God, that's ugly to put everywhere. Okay. It's terrible. <laughs> um, if we wanted to make this less verbose, we could make a function that throws. And so it would look a little bit more like this. Yep. But, I mean, I'm fine with it, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine throwing. It's a little bit more explicit this way, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see, how, let's see if that works. Uh, you need to connect that text. And then it will. Weapon panel. 
I, mean, I guess you can get rid of the mesh <laughs> display. Oh, yeah, there's probably a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's always drag and drop. Is it this? Uh-huh. But you have, to, you have to be careful not to... So, yeah, you do that and then drag without selecting. Yeah, it's dumb. That's it. Okay. I'm so into that. Uh, ooh, this I don't need. Nah, kill it. And then... That should do it. What was the other thing? No, that was it. Oh, we got rid of the, the little, like, uh, other stuff down mm -hmm. here, right? All this crap. Yep. Don't need it. All right, no whammies. <laughs> it's going to show weapon for, like, one frame. Yeah, I think I saw it. I saw it. It's only when you're it's when you're not in the game, which is annoying. Yeah. Is it, did it throw an exception? <laughs> did it throw an exception? Uh, uh I, good good question. Also I wonder if the code even got there because the player didn't exist yet, right? Oh yeah, it's true. So maybe it just errored very early. E is for some reason hard for me. Hmm. Um it's easier for me to hit Q for some reason while I'm driving around, or you know what it is is uh, just like just hitting E in general is difficult, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, okay, well nice. that's done. Gosh, our UI is terrible. But <laughs> it's so it doesn't atrocious. matter. It's it really... literally doesn't matter. Right no, now. it's true. Yeah. I um, yeah, I wonder if like long term if this is gonna be like you only have two weapons to pick from. So it's like triangle to switch and hold triangle to drop it for whatever you find on the ground, sort of modern modern FPS style. Right. Which ain't bad. Is our builder killable? It is right it now. It is, right? Yeah. And it's supposed to drop its little thing behind. Yeah. You gotta kill it faster than that. <laughs> Does it have more? How many hit points does it have? Two? Two? Two or three? I think the answer is two. <laughs> and we have infinite builders right now, right? Infinite resources, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have infinite resources, but our builders are not. Oh, sorry. Infinite builders, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, our builders are finite, right? That's right. Yeah, we didn't really we didn't really put any limitations on them getting destroyed yet. Though it would be cool. So now we have weapon switching. Ah, let's say we should map to a controller, but that's that'll probably be very friendly. Uh, we could now that can be that can be a off stream thing too. Okay, yeah, we'd have to re-implement the cursor too, because um, we definitely need something that's drawn uh, drawn on screen. That is true. Uh, this cube here, by the way, is just kind of something I threw in there. Mm -hmm. It was what it's what we've been using in Manchester the entire time. Uh, the cursor in the ascent is just like two little brackets that kind of like are hmm. like they they kind of they kind of like uh, they kind of surround a channel in which the bullet would fly through, right? So they they do turn and orient themselves. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. Uh, it's very minimalistic for a a okay. cursor that you're shooting at. See, everything else, everything else about that game is not minimalistic, so. No. Uh, but in this game, our cursor is actually for targeting, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Not not so much for the aim. Yeah. But it might not be the worst thing in the world to actually have a real cursor. Right. I wonder too how. Hmm. I wonder how the game would feel if different weapons had different cursor modes, where it's like the standard shell is not actually point and click, but it's you're spinning the turret around and shooting. Whereas the mortar becomes more of a like maybe you hold the trigger, aim and release to fire or something. So some... I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that having it like visual reinforcement would be good. 
Yeah, well, and like, I don't want to aim everything with a cursor. Like, I feel like we want to only point at things with the cursor when they need to be pointed at. Yeah. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you think about, like, in Hades, when you secondary fire the gun... I think that's kind of what I was thinking of. Yeah, it's the... That, that mortar shell is great. It's a very satisfying kind of, like, you have the you have the decal on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that's basically what we're thinking of, right? It's like a decal on the ground that, like... That's that's what I was hoping we would, yeah. we would do the second part of this is yeah, because uh, I do want it would be nice to have that painted for mortar mode. Yeah, should we do it? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. And do you want to make it hold to get the decal and then release to fire? That's a that's a big firing mode change, but it'd be really cool. Oh, that's interesting. At, at this point, I'm I'm copying Hades completely, but it was very effective. It also had a nice limitation where you couldn't, like with the twin sticks, you couldn't actually push it past its limit, its limit, which felt good. With Remind the me again, what happens if you just pressed secondary fire and then let go without holding it? Did he just shoot immediately? I, I think you see, yeah, I think you see a cursor. I think you see really the decal very quickly. Yeah. That's right. I actually had to train myself how to use that. It wasn't obvious to me right away. Mm. Uh, okay. So if we were doing decals, how do we wrap decal around something that has height? That's a good question. Would it, would it make sense to have it just be flat on the ground and move underneath buildings to start? Yeah, we can just have it on the ground and then just be occluded. Because that is, that is sort of what gets targeted, right? And then... Yeah, though, I don't know if that makes it harder or easier for us to do wrapping after that. What draws the cursor right now? Is it player input? <sighs> That's a good... It's a client effect, right? Get a build cursor. Yeah. We do it under build. <laughs> And the cursor right now has both, it's playing double duty as both building stuff and shooting stuff. Mm -hmm. I think this is actually the, the, what motivated all my questions about the, like the controller. It wasn't that so much I cared about the controller. I just cared about the cursor, <laughs> you yep. know? Yep. Um, right now you can you can build and shoot at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Is there an argument saying that that is not necessary? It, I, it probably doesn't work. That's a lot. That's a lot to do at once. What if building was that you hold down a button and it replaces the cursor, mm -hmm. and that's what you, that's that becomes your action when you click. Yep. Yeah, that that sounds right to me. Like hold down, hold down shift or something, and then you're in builder mode when you're clicking. Right. Okay. Um. And that way, we only have one cursor, right? <laughs> There's only one cursor, and it's it's either a, a reticle if you're shooting a standard shell, a decal, a targeting decal if you're using the mortar, or yep. the build cursor if you're building. Yep. And the build cursor if you're building could actually be the silhouette. The transparent the thing. silhouette yeah. of the thing that you're building. That'd right? be really cool. Yeah. yeah. What does it look like in StarCraft when you're about to build? You see, you see like the green outline of the thing. Let's just look at what people. I'm ready to have my APM just shamed here. That's okay, we can't actually see it, so. <laughs> can we actually see their cursors in this? Or is this, looks like we kind of can, right? Yeah, we should. I think they just, they were waiting for their SCVs to get some resources. Okay, when that person decided that they actually wanted to build that thing. You know, one of the problems I think is that since we're spectating, we're getting whatever the... The spectator is seeing, right? Yeah. 
StarCraft to build tutorial. I'm so glad that there's no audio right now. I was gonna say that's that looked like it sounded just infuriating. Okay. Surely. God, I think you're move I feel like you're moving the cursor around and I know that's not true. <laughs> but all I see is their little StarCraft cursor moving. I'm like, Jeff, stop it. <laughs> At some point they're gonna build a barracks. Oh, they built a farm here, a supply depot. When did that happen? Okay. Oh, Ah, there you go. So that's all you see is the silhouette of the thing you're about to build. Yeah. Right. There's no additional effects, basically. That's right. Well, I guess that that's good enough for us, right? I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can actually capture the exact moment when he does it. Yeah. Gotta be faster than that. It's this, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, sweet. Yeah, that that would be fine for us. Okay. All right. So what we want is sorry. Is this a good use of our time? So I think so. Um, oh. Because I think untangling the cursor mess will help us. I, I feel like controller gameplay is important, and this will help us sort of sort it out. Okay, so, I think I agree with you. Yeah. Um, let's start with uh, the standard shell reticle, which I think the best thing we can do right now is draw a dot. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and how do we draw a dot in Unity? Can we just draw primitives in Unity? Is that possible? Uh, you can just put a sphere in, in the game, yeah. You can you can add a game object that is just sphere. Vectrosity. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to plug in here. Um, no, but the name is interesting. Yeah. Cute. Shit. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> that looks, nice. That looks familiar. Yeah. I love battles. So you're saying just get just get ourselves a game object. Yeah. Okay. Uh we'll just call a sphere. Mm -hmm. Uh this is immediately gonna become a prefab. Nice. I find I can't rename. Hmm. But I can double click. That's really weird. I wonder why. It's weird. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this now. Um, is it just going to be a sphere? It's not in world space, though, right? We kind of don't want it to change size as we move it around, right? It is going to be a screen space. Oh, object. that's a good point. I wonder how that works. Uh, I think we just need a screen space camera, right? It's not quite in the UI. Ah, I was gonna say, yeah. Do we pivot to the UI and we're? Ah, that'd be really weird. It's tough because we want. We do want some of it to be. Like not not every cursor is screen space because the mortar decal is game space. Agreed. What if what if we did something that was a little different for the standard shell where it was also game space, um, and it was sort of a arrow pointing out the front of your tank that just moved around so it was actually like you see your shot direction but not the point you're aiming at you're not always going to have the computer mouse cursor if you're playing the game exactly yeah i'm thinking like i'm thinking like make it make it the twin make it the stick for a twin stick where you're just picking oh, i see what happens if you switch modes where there is actually um 
the world where the world space position matters like you're targeting and mm -hmm. your cursor is actually really in a different position than you originally thought it was going to be can we can we control the mouse position when the cursor appears like can it always appear on top of the tank i think that might be weird okay i think it happens more than you think uh because the mouse the mouse position is a little fungible i see so you're saying it it should just appear I, I i don't know though right because if you're shooting at something and then you want to build right next to it like it kind of would help if you knew where the cursor was before you went to build mode right mm -hmm. and all of this is just us beating around the bush because True. we don't know how to draw something in, in screen space right now yeah that's fair let's just see what the internet has to say to for, for this. I, i'm totally Unity. curious yeah yeah, yeah. Draw some draw in screen space. I wonder if there's like a Unity cross. I could just create another canvas. It's just a different thing than the, the, the HUD, right? Like the HUD mm -hmm. is one canvas, right? And is there a reason, or is it part of the HUD? Is, I was gonna say, is there a reason not to draw it on the HUD? No, let's just do it on the HUD. Okay, yeah, I guess, I guess the only thing I could think is that it's not, it's sort of like not a, um, not every cursor gets rendered in here, but that's okay. This one does. Yep. That's right. Cool. Because it's got a camera for us already. It's in screen space. Yep. So I guess we'll just do it. Cool. Yeah, that feels like a thing that we're going to tease apart later, but I think this is totally fine. I totally know what you're saying. Um, I guess it's a sphere. I guess it's a sphere, yeah. Let's call it the cursor. And um, I mean, you could give it you can give it the bullet material if you want it to be red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's on the sphere collider itself for some reason. What should it be on the Is mesh? Sure? Oh, you can't change that material. Can you change the mesh that one? Yeah. Does it just create a material form for me? Is that or like what is this? Why did it add this? What that's, does it mean? That's the default. I think there's always. I think it always just picks the default material. So the material thing down here is connected to the mesh renderer. Yeah, but because they let the sphere collider just sit in between here somehow. So it, all, all the materials go at the bottom, uh, and I think it's because you can change the shaders around. Okay. I'm Wait. not sure if I get that UI. Why not add another tab called Material? That would <laughs> that would be more Unity like, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the the most Unity thing to do is to be super inconsistent. We don't cast shadows. We don't do anything fancy, right? Yeah. Uh, how come I can't see the sphere though? Uh, is it? It's on the UI layer. Um... How big is the sphere? It's pretty big. Uh. I actually don't know how to get this. It's really tiny. Is that is that what I'm reading here? I think here? it's really tiny. Yeah. Uh, I'm confused. The radius is half a unit. Let's make it fifty. Cool. No, that's actually the, the that's the collider. How do I actually change the sphere's dimensions? Do I, I, I scale you, it? I think you scale it. So I think okay. uh, my guess is that it is a single pixel right now. Yep. Because it's, uh, right. it's scale. Because scale one. And the scales. This thing scale tool. Okay, that's just one dimension. It's not what I want. I can just type it right. Mm -hmm. Too big. Yep. Huge. Uh, it really doesn't need to be that big, right? Maybe five. Five sounds good. Yeah. When you click off of this, it should be a. Uh moderately visible yeah uh still too small uh 
Okay, that is looking reasonable. Nice. I think. Okay. Um. Great. And is this just gonna have a script on it? Like, how are we gonna control this thing actually? It's a good question. I feel like I would love for the client effects manager to have something on it, because that was where the blue the the build cursor was, or maybe that's the wrong place for it. Mm -hmm. You can have. Um... I guess I've had things look up the game object in their in their init or in their awake. So the climate effects manager could well it awakes before this thing. That's too bad. I'm basically just going out and seeking the cursor gate. Oh, because like... the HUD yeah, that's right, because HUD is seen over scene. Well the client effects manager is also in I think the the problem with the HUD is that it's not persistent between scenes for that. And what do we do with the client? I think the client effects manager is just in the scene. Just in just in game in it, right? Oh. It's just there. Oh, yeah. okay. Great. And you could just add and connect it here. Okay. And then we might have we can have our game space cursors here as well and connect them all into the same system. So what we're saying is that there's a cursor. Yeah, it's a bunch of cursors. So this can't be a singleton. Oh, it's a singleton. It's a scene level singleton, right? So you can actually just delete it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so what we're saying is that there's going to be a public game object uh, screen cursor, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay, and then this is just going to return it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's already instantiated in the in the scene. Yep. The other thing we could do is make it a prefab and instantiate the same way that we're instantiating the build cursor, except we would instantiate as a child under the, the HUD, right? Yeah, you know, I think we'd have to. We have to pass the HUD to the client effects. It's kind of like, hang on a second. Maybe I'm going about this all the wrong. Like, how does the just because we put the cursor inside here it doesn't mean that it it's drawing on the canvas, right? Uh it does because it's in the canvas, and it's on the UI layer as well. So it, it should be okay. Let's just maybe implement it and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's at least fully connect it. Like client effects, put the put the cursor on there, and then let's see it. Do yeah. The thing. So well, the thing that's going to suck about this is for every scene we create, we're going to have to make this connection ourselves, like every single time. For now, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Again, I think. But I, eventually, we'll we'll refactor it. Right? I think. Yeah. I think you what you want is for this to awake and find the object name cursor. Yeah. <laughs> or have the have the get scene cursor do a, a eager lookup and then save it. Yeah, totally. Okay, so what we were saying is, I think there's just like a, we've got a whole thing that we're doing here, right? We're, mm -hmm. for, for now, actually, let's just get rid of the build cursor yep. for the time being uh, and turn it off. Yep. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, mouse position. Mm. I think mouse position is a vector theoretically, right? Nice. I think it's a vector three. I think there's. I think it somehow has a Z on it. Uh, I don't want to mess with that though. Why doesn't it um, like this? It's 
not a variable. What? Do I need to do... What is the Z what is the Z position of the cursor to begin with? Z uh, zero should be zero. good for that. Yeah. Okay. That should be in plane with the HUD. And we did the same thing and put the HUD around every uh, around around the origin, right? It's why why uh let's see, the HUD uh, no no no. No. The HUD is at zero. Mm -hmm. The cursor is also at zero. Cool. Okay. So zero here should be totally safe value. Mm -hmm. And this should just work. Let's see that. I'm skeptical. You're skeptical. Mm -hmm. We're all skeptical. It's a, it's a little too easy so far. Uh, did I forget to save? Maybe. Maybe. Ooh, God. <laughs> I was going to say drive to the center of the map and see if it's there. <laughs> Right. Uh, we are setting the build cursor inactive. Yeah. What was actually synchronizing it with? Oh, it's here. It's doing this. Oh, oh we're setting it back. To... <laughs> actually, this is probably. Oh, I see. We're just like flipping it off at certain times. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we should be doing. But I didn't see the cursor. I didn't see this cursor drawing anywhere. Right? No, I'm curious what position it's actually in when the game is running. We can inspect that and see. Yeah. I learned a cool hotkey the other day. Yeah. Command Shift P. What's that do? Uh, does it unpause too? Uh, I think so. Nice. Uh, okay, so far no cursor. I gotta kill this guy. Mm -hmm. Bastard. So I have a question: Is there a cursor, and is it directly under the mouse? HUD cursor. Its position is some crazy value. Wow. Wait, can you switch back to game mode real quick? Yeah. And it's not update. It's just not being drawn there because its position is really yeah. wacky. Well, it's, as you move the mouse around, it's also not doing anything, which is interesting. I would well, it's paused right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, as I move the mouse around, it is actually updating it. And is, does it approach zero in any direction? Not really. Okay. So, another question is, what even is the position of the mouse right now? Yeah, mouse position X. I mean, this should just break right away, right? Uh, I might have to like copy it. It's not giving me my mouse over goodness here it's having a real bad time too it's having a bad time yeah. yeah huh sorry but when, when basically we... the idea here is, is, is this is way out of whack right it's way out of whack when we get the mouse position what do we do with it previously we take it and we cast a ray from that to the to the game board Uh, screen point to Ray. What what is that doing? Yeah. Huh. 
So that's just Unity Magic. That's too bad. Yeah, it's using the camera to figure it out. Um, okay. Unity, get mouse position. And screen? Mouse screen space position. Because hmm. clearly we're not getting the screen space position right. Yeah. Well. So we could get the camera that is in the HUD and do screen to world point. Isn't screen to world the wrong thing though? We don't want that. But but it'd be the world of the of the of the HUD camera. Does that Whoa. make sense? Oh, the HUD camera. Oh gosh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because right now this is clearly giving us like the wrong values, right? Like. Uh, like very, very, very wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. It's pretty perplexing. Yeah, cause that sure seems like it should work. But, but it is a screen space position. Fuck. Off in mouse X Y. <laughs> Unity screen space position is too high. Because I would have just expect this to be a pixel position of the viewport, right? The same way it is in a browser. I agree. Debug prints, perhaps? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of these. Can I just print a vector? Is that possible? Yeah, I think you can. I don't think you need a. Not sure needs to go in quotes either for that. Um, yeah. I wonder what is our coordinate system for the HUD? Well, let's see how this runs first. It's a good question because it feels like. It feels like that's more than 10 pixels, but I can't tell. All right. I paused it. I mean, that, that looks that like looks normal right. shit, right? Yeah, that, that, looks... that looks like normal shit. So uh, is it always the same number? OK, good, no. Cool. So what's going on with this? And if you look at that cursor right now, it's same giant numbers. Uh, they're saying if I should debug. No, no, no. I was going to say, look, just look in the Unity sidebar inspector to see what the data is. Oh, good call. I am, I am, yeah, this, the, the debugger is a little dodgy. Yeah. It, it's a little dodgy. Yeah, it's usually. Yeah, it's really high. Um, Unusual. So right now, if you just well, this that... is the Rex transform. I don't know what relationship that has to right. I'm also wondering that if you just set the cursor. Well, the XY... scale is really weird here in the HUD. That is kind of weird. Where's that coming from? Well, can, can you just set the cursor X Y to like 200, 200? I, I kind of I just want to see this thing pop up on our screen. Yeah, there it is. It's got light on it and everything. Where's the light coming from? Huh. We don't have a light. <laughs> we have we have one light in the game, and I think it's using it. It's funny. Is there huh. a point light on the HUD? It's, or do you think it's using the light from the game? It's the game. It's in the scene, yeah. Oh, fuck <laughs> me. That's funny. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, huh. And if you if you put zero zero, what do you get? Because I think it's zero zero is the center uh, for the position that is. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, it's the center. That's not the center of the mouse coordinates for one thing. I think the I think the rectangle form needs to be top right instead of center middle or top left. But because before we're like this was like the center of the oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. We need to do like some little transform. Well, so in the in the inspector and the rect transform, there's that crosshair diagram. But if you click on that, uh, we can change how this appears in the UI. It should just be top left, yeah. This one? Uh-huh. OK. Should do that in prefab. Oh, yeah, good point. What exactly is that changing? It's changing its coordinates within the HUD, within the canvas. So now 0, 0 will be the top left. Or rather, you need to set, reset it because it uh, immediately configured it to be in the center of the screen again. So basically, what we're saying is that this is the position. That's the origin of anything inside that rect transform. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, though I'm surprised it didn't. There, it jumped to the top left. OK, yeah. So I mean, if you click on rect transform again, there are just multiple. And then if I go 100 here. Mm -hmm. It's, I would have expected that to move it. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it did last time too. I I don't quite understand what the delay is there, but it does seem to. Uh, maybe I need to like open. Oh, I need to be in scene. I was in game. Oh, there you go. So if I go to one hundred, okay, that moves it that way, and if I go to hundred Y, that moves it up. Mm -hmm. So I. Don't know how mouse positions work, though. At the very least, you probably have to negate that Y, but the numbers we're getting are so out there. Yeah. Let's try something else. OK. Real quick. Real, real quick, and then it's been done. Yeah. It's really, uh, it's really confusing, though. Why is it making those? Oh. Oh, I like it. That is a very funny hack. I need to see it in real time, right? Mm -hmm. I expect this is starting from the top left. That's a surprise. So the origin is. Oh, oh come damn. on. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, wait, the turrets don't do anything. God damn it. Yeah, but it's stuck on them, so it's fine. OK. So the origin is the lower left. OK. But somehow, when we set the cursor position uh, here, it has a scale applied to them, I think. Oh, um, go go back to Unity real quick. Click on the cursor. So my suspicion is that this scale here uh -huh. is being applied. That's really to interesting. Them. Oh yeah, wait. If you if you go back to cursor and move around, can we get it to zero zero in the bottom left? If it's scaling, it should do the same thing. Yeah. Let me uh, go down here and then I'll pause. I mean, I. I was watching the cursor in real time on the panel. It wasn't doing it, so weird. Yeah, 
I feel like this scale is is being is is is, is influencing it, right? Mm -hmm. What's the significance of z zero point zero one nine? Like, what is the reciprocal of that? Don't know. Fifty two point three approximately. Is that like the like, percentage of the game we're running at, or something? Yeah. So if you divided this by 52, 25, 76. It'd still be pixel 49. That's, that's well, I don't know. I was, was going to say, yeah, if you, if, you, if you put the game back, if you unpause it, the coordinates don't, they're not scaled. That's like, how can I get this to zero, right? Yeah. Oh, so X is kind of zeroing out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of an offset. Huh. And then Y... Y is kind of inscrutable. I mean, it does go lower as I go I go below, but it, it just basically stops updating when the when the mouse. I think that uh, I mean off. the cursor yeah. the cursor build mode tells it to right. We well, return early if you're not in the scene. Right. Uh, that's really strange. What what just happens if you just set the? Oh, if we can't build, right? Right. Yeah. Is there is there any other properties on screen cursor? Do we maybe need to wrap it in like a UI? It looks like it's doing the right thing, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. It's a good mystery. More, more to think about. I think. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um. Yeah. I guess I guess we're all over time, so that might be that. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll we'll figure it out uh, tomorrow night. I like yeah, I'm curious. I'm wondering if there's like a oh yeah, I probably need that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's a like setting coordinates for objects in a HUD or something that we haven't really looked at programmatically yet, because we haven't. This will be the first time we're doing it. So it's it is, and then like I'm not. I don't know. Like, like the, this canvas thing is just such a black box to me. Yeah, I mean the width the width and height are like totally programmatic. So. I don't know what the scale is or why that matters. It's really yeah. interesting. It hasn't it hasn't touched any of our other stuff though, so I am curious. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see. All right. Okay, doke. Sweet. Nice, nice mortars. Nice weapon modes. Uh, off on Thursday, but I'll see you Monday. I'll see you in person on Monday. Oh yes, we are skipping Thursday's stream, so yep. I guess Monday. Yeah. I, okay. I, I tweeted it. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just coming over to your house on Monday. See you then. Easy, easy peasy. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Cheers.